Being able to connect two wires together properly is such an important skill because if you're doing any kind of DIY repair, wire is always part of the job, but most people just don't know how to do it. And here's how it usually turns out. They'll twist the wires together, cover it with a mess of tape, and this is the end result. It's not safe or the right way to do it. Now pros will tell you to go ahead and solder the wire, but you've really got to know what you're doing. But even when you're finished, it's not done because you've got to cover it up. So most people will use a type of heat shrink tubing like this, and when you're finished, it does give a pretty good result, but it's going to take you a little while. And if you've got a number of wires to do, this can be a real pain, especially if you're in a real tight or small amount of space. And then some people will turn to a connector like this. These don't require any soldering. You just strip your wire and insert them into the connector and then you crush the connector down. Now this is a special ratcheting tool that applies a lot of pressure to hold that wire tight. But these have some common problems as well. Many people will insert too small of a wire and then even after they crimp it, the wire will just easily pull out. But sometimes you don't notice it until after you've installed it and then it's too late. But additionally, if you want it to be watertight, you've got to heat shrink the connector when you're done. But now I want to show you a better way to connect two wires together that's as easy as the crimp connection, but it actually gives you the same quality as a solder connection when you're done, but without all the work. And the best part of all is when you're finished, they're actually waterproof. These are a new type of connector that are sold under a number of different names. Some people call them hybrid, others call them solderless, and some call them solder and seal connectors. But these are nothing short of amazing. And they come in multiple sizes to fit different thicknesses of wire, and they're surprisingly cheap. And to use them, you only need a set of wire strippers along with a tool to help you shrink the tubing. Now for that, you're gonna to wanna to use a device like this. This is a really inexpensive heat gun, costs $15, and it even includes a special adapter that allows you to constantly the heat right into the connector. This is perfect if you're in a cramped space and you won't melt anything else that you don't want to. Using these connectors is easy, but there are a few tips to getting good results. You're gonna start by stripping a small amount of the insulation off of the end of each wire. Then you can insert the wires into the connector itself, but you wanna pay attention to those colored bands because they're designed to tightly grip the insulation of the wire. So when you insert them into the connector, you wanna make sure that the insulation is underneath those colored bands. But the other difference is you're not going to twist the end of those wires. You're going to press them into the connector as shown. And then when you insert the second wire, you're actually going to push that wire into the other. So they're going to kind of intermingle in the middle and that's going to help you form a better connection. Now grab your heat gun and turn it on. You want to apply heat all over this connector and you'll quickly see how fast the connector will shrink down. But then you want to keep applying heat to the middle and you'll see that ring of solder start to melt and it will actually flow in and around the wires. And if you get the heat gun that I showed you, you can attach the reflector and that'll make the job go a lot easier. You might also notice that that solder in the middle does not melt away completely and it's not supposed to. That's part of what gives this connector so much strength. I tried pulling this thing apart and once these things are cooled, they are really strong. I could tear it apart, but it held that wire a lot tighter than any kind of crimped on connector. Force. And the finished result looks good and it's totally waterproof. This would be ideal for any kind of underground sprinkler repair or fixing any loose or broken wires on a trailer. But what is that solder actually doing? I wanted to see how well it would penetrate the wires, so I went ahead and cut the wire in the middle to take a look. And you can see the solder is heavily melted in the center, which is definitely going to give you a better connection. But I wanted to see how far did the solder actually travel, so I went ahead and recut the connector a lot closer to the insulation. And to my surprise, you can see that the solder also reached these wires as well. And even though the solder is not touching every single wire, it definitely flowed around most of them and it's going to give you a better connection. Because remember, many people just use crimp connectors that don't have any solder at all. So by using one of these connectors, you're going to get the benefits of a solder joint, but with the speed and convenience of a crimped on connector. So hopefully you liked this video, got you to see a better way to connect wires that you may never have known existed. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.